the attempt here is to work with uh, extremely poor farmers, uh, tenant farmers and uh, marginal farmers and see how agriculture makes economic sense to them. Uh, I think uh, the previous speaker spoke about institutions. So, I would also like to emphasize the importance of institutions. So, in Andhra Pradesh, there is a program called the uh, SSG, uh, I mean, SSG, Universal SSG program, uh, which is financed by World Bank, Government of India and Government of Andhra Pradesh. So, over the last 10 years, in virtually all the villages, poor women have been organized into self-help groups. Uh, they have been further federated at the village level and mandal level. And this is a, this social networks have been playing a very important role in Andhra Pradesh. They, yeah, this is the kind of federation structure that exists. And each level, they have their own community professionals who are accountable to them, both at the village level, mandal level, district level. And they are uh, intervening in 8 to 10 different sectors. So, there is holistic set of services being provided for their members and there is a tremendous social capital here, uh, community professionals, women leaders and community resource persons. Community resource persons are the best practicing uh, members of the SSGs, whether it is in agriculture, whether it is in coming out of poverty, in food security. So, this network acts as a savings uh, led financial intermediation model and so the SSGs are uh, savings and uh, uh, loaning bodies, they lend to members, they also borrow from banks and lend to members. So, they also act as financial intermediaries. So, this is a very important uh, you know shock absorber for the communities in the beginning. So, their uh, emergency requirements are met from this and subsequently their investment and other large requirements are met through this model. Uh, just to give you an idea of what these networks have done, over the last 10 years, their own savings, SSG's own corpus is of the order of 4,650 crores and they have been able to borrow from the banks something like 34,000 crores and this borrowing or uh, you know their ability to borrow from the banks has increased tremendously in the last five years. And this is the model on which we are working that for a family to come out of poverty, come out of abject poverty, have a decent quality of life, there is a institutional nurturing and financial support required for about six to eight years and around 100,000 rupees investment coming from outside that is required for them. Now, the innovation in the project was these institutions uh, were then leveraged to provide a variety of livelihoods to their members. In the absence of these institutions, these livelihoods would not have been that profitable for them. So, they have been doing collective marketing of agriculture produce. In fact, in the last uh, six to eight weeks this year, they acted as the procurement centers at the village level so that the farmers could sell the paddy at minimum support price to the village level procurement centers. They did a turnover of close to 800-900 crores in a period of around 8 weeks. Then they also run their uh, village level milk collection centers and they have their own bulk milk cooling units. Uh, they have a beautiful risk mitigation insurance model, about 1 crore members are covered by this. And there are health and nutrition interventions gender initiatives. Now, the most important livelihood source of livelihoods for the poor is agriculture. And all of you know the kind of risks that are there in agriculture, especially in dry land agriculture, whether it is inputs, credit, marketing, high cost of inputs is one of the biggest risks. Now, the paradigm shift in Andhra Pradesh was that we first focused on the farmers groups or the women farmers and the model was shifting from external input intensive agriculture to local natural resource based agriculture and knowledge intensive agriculture. <clears throat> so, farmers as scientists, as innovators, as experimenters 
and not as passive recipients of some great advice coming from outside. And this was basically uh, the kind of work done by very dedicated NGOs in the state, not only in Andhra Pradesh, other states also and uh, former scientists like Subhash Palekar, Bhaskar Save. So about three years I would say about the incubation phase where there was a collaboration between the SCRP, the implementing agency, resource NGOs and women's organizations. Subsequent scaling up was done by the women themselves. So this is an agriculture intervention which is managed by women's groups. They have their own extension system. So the agriculture extension worker is accountable to the women's groups. And this is agriculture based on locally available natural resources. It promotes biodiversity and the focus is on house level, food and nutrition security. And the extension, uh, that means the scaling up, moving from one village to another was actually done by best practicing farmers. So those who had excelled in this local resource based agriculture in the village were the ones who took this message to other villages. And each village, there is a village activist. Uh, most of them are women farmers and uh, they are responsible for about 100 to 120 uh, members. And there is a cluster activist for a group of five villages, the weekly meetings. Technical support to the cluster activists, village activists is provided by NGOs, by best practicing farmers and the agriculture staff with SERP. And farmers pay around 50 rupees per annum to the women's groups as part of the extension cost. <clears throat> and this intervention, the extension intervention is supervised by the women's organizations at the village level on a monthly basis. And these are the kind of practices they have taken up to ensure that they do not use chemicals for pest management. So variety of agronomical practices have been used. And for soil fertility management, some 9 or 10 agronomical practices have been used to reduce their dependence on chemical fertilizers. And the third uh, cost that they were looking at, the third major risk in agriculture is the uh, you know, unseasonal conditions or long dry spells. So there is a drought proofing model which ensures that each farmer's holding itself uh, makes it uh, uh, conserve every drop of water and uh, soil fertility. These are the practices for uh, drought proofing. This was done using the Narega funds and from other farmers who did not use the Narega funds did themselves and it costs if you use all the Narega uh, unit costs, it costs around 48,000 rupees per acre for a dry land to become drought proof. But it is not just the mechanical practices, there are also economical practices which ensure that uh, you know the over a period of time the soil fertility and uh, moisture retention actually increases and the variety of crop management practices. Now the farmers really uh, appreciated this intervention because we started with about only 100 farmers in 2004-05 and uh, last year 2010-11 there were 10 lakh farmers who are practicing this and this current year in Kharif is about 15 lakh farmers who have done it over 35 lakh acres, which is around 18 percent of the cultural area of state of Andhra Pradesh. <clears throat> so basically food security here means using local resources and providing food security, in situ food security within the village, food and nutrition security. So we are also looking at polycropping. So there are all various case studies for how they have been able to do this. Then we have a innovation which we took up about three years ago is how do the poorest farmers just cultivating half acre of land, how do they get net incomes of around 50,000 rupees? That was the challenge that we took up and uh, this is about irrigated land on lease. 
and we are able to see anywhere between 40,000 to 50, 60,000 rupees uh, for both the crops put together. One fourth acre is for food security, their own paddy followed by pulses or followed by paddy itself and the rest one fourth acre are for 10 to 12 kinds of vegetables. This is a, a tribal uh, member from Srikaklam district. So she got a net income of 52,500 rupees from this. Then there is another person from Warangal, got about 41,000 rupees. Then this were uh, four uh, landless poor families who by taking lands on lease, they have become food secure. This is another very intensive model of uh, multi-tire farming, seven-tire intensive cropping models where in around 1100 square feet, one can expect incomes of 6000 to 8000 rupees. And this is another uh, landless poor member who took land on lease. The SSG Federation gave the land to them on lease at 7000 rupees. And this is from a district called Anantapur, which is a drought prone district. Through this, uh, you know, conservation furrows, etc., on a dry land, on two and a half acres of land, they could get about 43,000 rupees. Uh, what we did was that we first of all ensured that external inputs were not required for agriculture or vastly reduced because we could get rid of chemical pesticides almost in the first year. But chemical fertilizers takes time. So agriculture distress to viable farming and the kind of paradigm shift that were required to do this have been uh, many and the most important paradigm shift is that agriculture or pest management is possible without chemicals, soil fertility management is possible without chemical fertilizers. And uh, the best thing here was the kind of courage, remarkable courage that the women showed. Because the advice came to them from their groups, they were willing to defy their husbands, willing to defy the local uh, mindset, which is over a period of 50, 60 years that external inputs are a must. So this is a, uh, I would say, a innovation, not one innovation, innovations of thousands of poor farmers and who are proud now that they are recognized as innovators and they are ready to uh, train others, diffuse their innovations to other uh, farming families. So I will end my presentation here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,